All right, this is Matt. I'm making this video on how I made my backstop for shooting out of old bridge lumber. Um, as you can see, what I did over here is I buried five of these landscaping timbers uh, from one of your local home improvement stores. And I put them two feet into the ground. I didn't go any further down than that because I didn't figure I needed to be below frost line. And then I put a brace on the front here and sunk it into the ground just a little bit in order to keep that brace from moving. And using that as a frame, I put a 12 foot green treated tube or uh, cedar tone 2x4 that I had laying around across the top to hold it all together. And then I took all of the railing boards, which are two inch thick oak boards, and I layered the front of it which two, with two inch thick oak boards. Now you will see there's some uh, there's some gaps in the uh, in there where a round that's fired could possibly get into the first layer. However, if you come around the back here, I put a support in here at the back. And then I dropped in a second layer of two inch thick oak boards, as you can see here. Um, most of them are, were about three foot long. And I put those in as a second layer. Um, on, and you can see on both sides, I did a full layer across it. So now I have four inches of oak. And even though this was old bridge wood, and you can see some of the rot on the outside, there's a good solid core in all of that timber. And then once that was done, uh, you can see we took some old things like uh, pallets, um, things like that, and just tucked it in between. But then I took uh, two and a half to three inch thick timbers from the driving bridge that was on our property before, and I leaned them up against the backstop. So in total, I have seven to eight inches of solid oak timber. Um, once again, I'll walk around the front here so you can see that. And I figure seven to eight inches will stop anything short of maybe a 50 cal, which I don't own, so I'm not going to be shooting it with that. Uh, once again, you can see I just tucked in um, extra timber uh, pallets and stuff that we had just as an extra absorbent. And then you have the, the heavy duty um, oak boards creating an extra backstop back here. Um, I put the front supports in because I knew I was going to be putting a lot of, of pressure pushing forward on it. So I knew I had to have at least a couple of the landscaping timbers pushing back against it. Uh, all of this was wood that I just had laying around. Like I said, once we got done uh, re, re railing and re uh, decking the, uh, the two bridges we have on our property. One's a walking bridge and one's a driving bridge. Uh, behind that, we had this old tire sitting back here, so I threw it back here for now. Um, one thing you could do uh, as a back, you could use behind this if you really wanted to make it uh, completely immune to pretty much any round, was you could put a layer of sandbags back here if you wanted to stack them that high. Or you could collect old tires, and instead of putting them upright like this, I would lay them on the ground, uh, fill them with stand, sand, and then alternate them so that would absorb anything. Uh, behind that, we just stacked up old firewood, and you can see in behind, um, it just goes into empty forest for about three quarters of a mile. And uh, as the any round that would manage to penetrate would have to go through about three quarters of a mile of forest with enough effort to get anywhere near any civilization on that side. So I'm really not too worried about that. Um, the barrier is six feet tall, it's about 14 feet wide. Um, we use it with for archery. Uh, so far I've uh, shot it with uh, 22s and 9 millimeters just as some target practice and had absolutely no issues with it. Obviously that's not going to penetrate very far, but uh, very soon I'm going to sight in uh, one of my hunting rifles on it and uh, we'll see how it performs then, which I have no doubts it'll stop everything. And uh, 
just on a whim too we threw this old trailer against it we found buried in the uh, forest we moved into this place we dug it out slapped it up back here for now as an extra little bit of uh barrier my plan was to stand it completely on end but it's extremely heavy so the uh the steel on that is going to stop anything that would even make it through the, the middle of it um and then to hold it all in place i screwed some of these timbers at the top to keep the angled ones from moving um and then at the center here, you can see I had a little bit of a gap, so I added an extra layer of that I ran out of the uh, the longer timbers, you can see here. But I added uh, another layer of the 2x6s, the old ones. And once again, you can hear that's pretty solid lumber. So I'm really not worried about anything getting through 7 to 8 inches of, uh, of oak timber. Okay, I'm standing back about 80 feet from it here, so this is kind of where I'd be shooting uh, the pistol from. Uh, I'm recording all this on a GoPro, so it's probably a little bit, looks a little bit too much of a wide screen, but hopefully I can take care of that in editing. And then I have measurements for 160 and 240, so I can scope in a hunting rifle without any issues. Uh, this is a view of the shooting backstop at about 300 feet so right about 100 yards so this is where I will be scoping in the hunting rifle this year and as you can see the driveway rises just a little bit so that even if a larger caliber rifle would manage to find a weak point in all that timber it's going to go right into the ground behind it because there's a slight elevation here it's maybe maybe an eight foot elevation but that's just enough to uh to put the round right into the ground with about 20 or 30 feet behind the uh, behind the backstop. All right, along with the backstop, I put together um, a couple of shooting targets, as you can see here. Um, right now, they're just uh, pine boards, pine two by fours that I had laying around, and a couple of pieces of plywood. Now, I'm going to be honest; I would probably, if I was going to do it again, um, just build a square backstop and use cardboard because as you can see obviously the plywood's gonna get ripped up pretty fast uh, but for now it'll work i am going to coat it with paint exterior paint um, and you can get that for free if you're near any paint man or uh, paint mixer like diamond vogel or uh, one of those companies because they have mist tints all the time so if you keep your eye on them, you can just get a, uh, a paint that will help these survive a little longer out here because obviously your standard pine boards aren't going to survive very long. And then we also have uh, an archery target. Um, uh, my uh, mom likes to shoot archery, so we've got that put together for her. Eventually, I'm probably going to along the edges here, kind of where my shadow is right there. Uh, Right along this area, I'm going to put a wing off to the side um, so that if I do want to use any sort of metal reactive target, there's a an extra barrier on that side. Um, and I'll probably add another one on this side. Uh, once again, I'm going the same line right along here. Uh, and I may do it out of sandbags. You can see I had uh, dropped one in there just to see how far I like that or not, but we'll... Uh, We'll decide that later. I could just use some of the, more of the old timbers that I have. So if you have old lumber lying around or you're taking something apart, you don't always have to throw it away or burn it. You can find a way to recycle it. Um, and like I said, the old tires also. Uh, you fill those with sand and stack those behind this and you will have a barrier that is completely impenetrable. Um, I thought about using sandbags as my barrier, but obviously the more you shoot them, the more they disintegrate. Um, some people have seen you've used railroad ties, which is a very good idea also. There's not much that's going to get through that. Um, but I didn't have those on hand. I didn't feel like paying for them. So I used what I had on hand. Okay, when we bought our property, it has this little driving bridge that you have to go across in order to get to the road, which is off to the side over there. Uh, and that's where I got the timbers from. They're three inch 
Uh, well, what we have on right now is three inch white oak timbers. Uh, I know it was oak that came off and I'm going to assume it was white oak since that uh, resists the water better than most other timbers do. Um, and then I built a green treated railing for it, which I'm not real happy with, so I'm probably going to be redoing it soon. Um, just because the bridge got a little bit narrower than I wanted. Um, and so it's a little tight with the larger pickup trucks. But this is where I got the timber from, and I still have a large number of timbers left. So if I want to expand the, uh, the backstop, I will use those extra timbers. But that's where I got most of the wood for that from. And now we'll go over and take a look at the walking bridge quick. So this is the second bridge that was on the property when we bought it. Uh, it's a walking bridge. At one point we have a flowing, at some points we have a flowing creek down below, but uh, it's been so dry already that it's pretty much already stopped flowing. So what I did is I stripped off all the top boards all the way down to the metal girders that you can see down there. Um, and I tore all the, uh, the railings and everything. We stacked them up. They sat for about a year. Well, a little less than a year, maybe six months. Uh, and then, like I said, I decided to build the, uh, the backstop out of it. So the bridge turned out really nice. Um, bought the uh, wire on Amazon, twisted it so it would look nice. Put it on there, and then um, uh, we did this for my daughter's graduation. And my wife and her put together these hanging jars, and they put lanterns in them sometimes, and it looks really cool. So that's where the other half of the timber came from. Okay, folks, I moved over to the garage here to show you the other thing I built to go along with the shooting backstop. Uh, I built a shooting table. And walk around it here. I had, once again, a gallon of free paint, so I coated it in this blue. Uh, it's an interior paint, but I don't plan on leaving this outside. So this is mainly just a protectant for it. Uh, let me flip it over here quick. It's not real heavy. So I'll show you what I did on the bottom. Now, once again, uh, I had some extra wood left over, so it's two feet wide. And there's a four foot line here for, for setting your rifle on. And then there's a four foot from there to there that if you want to have things next to you um, for when you're scoping in your rifle. Um, also, I ran 2 by 4 all the way across, two of them there, and uh, screwed everything down to it so that it had a nice, strong support. And then I did a leg up here, and you can see there's, there's four legs, there's five legs because of the center one I added for a little bit of extra support. So let me flip this back up real quick, and I'll show you why. So I left off the leg here in the corner so that if I wanted to slide a chair right into here and then set on it while I'm scoping in the rifle, I don't have that leg in the way. But the uh, it's still really, really sturdy. You can see I'm, I'm pushing down on it pretty hard and there's no give to it at all. Okay, folks. Um, finished up my shooting table here that I was just talking about a few minutes ago. Um, I added indoor-outdoor carpet at the top. That way you can have a, a rifle or handguns or ammo, whatever you're going to be shooting next, sitting off to the side. Um, you can see here I've laid out my Ruger 10-22 uh, rifle. Um, I do need to check the scope on it because I believe the scope is off just a little bit. Um, you can see it's in a safe, unloaded condition. There's no magazine in it. Chambers open, safety's on. Um, and I also laid out my son's hunting rifle. Um, and I built a little uh, support towards the end. So now when I sit down, i set the camera down here for a minute. Pick up the rifle. I could actually slide this back a little bit. I've cut a notch in a two by six up here so I can set the rifle on without any problems. You can see that. And then, when I'm going to scope my rifle in, I have a nice support to be nice and steady. I can move it back and forth if I want to. And uh, once again, the rifle is, uh, is in a safe condition. Uh, safety's on. The uh, 
magazine is out of it. So, all right, so as you can see, you can build a nice um, shooting table. Like I said, mine's built out of all just extra lumber I had. Paint was from uh, a local store called Diamond Vogel. They have mist tints. I got the blue as a mist tint. Uh, the carpet was left over from an old project uh, that we ripped out. We kept when we moved. And so I don't have anything more than time into this right now because I had all the supplies on hand. Uh, talk to you later. This is Matt. Uh, I'm out for today.